All right, guys, how's it going? I got another maintenance video for you. We're going to be tackling the dreaded tracker valve. I've had this valve go on me a couple of times uh, over the last three years. It's a pain in the butt. Sometimes they just fall apart. Uh, sometimes it could be debris in the fuel, whatever. But it's gone on me. I didn't uh, want to bring it in. I didn't have time for that. So I decided to tackle it myself. I'm going to show you guys how I did it. Let's get to it. All right, guys, I got a 200 Optimax. It's a 2008. And uh, the tracker valve is right behind this cover plate. So we're going to tackle it. I'm going to do it right on the rails. You can do it without having to take the rails off the fuel rails here. Um, you know, if you're uh, up to it, you want to tear it all apart, go for it. But I tackled it with it in place. I'm going to show you what I had to do to get to it. It's a bit of a pain. I'm going to show you some of the tools I used to help make the job a bit easier for me. So the tools you're going to need are a socket wrench with an eight mil end on it and get yourself one of these tiny little ratchets. I bought it on Amazon. You can find them anywhere. I'm going to be using a 532nd uh, hex bit. That's going to make your life a lot easier. If you don't have that, you can use an Allen key. Uh, it's just a pain in the butt with it. This will help you a lot. Uh, here's the other things you're going to need is a 24C grease. I've already uh, taken it apart, but I'm going to show you uh, the disassembly about what I did. There's the part number for the new tracker valve. That's what it looks like right here. Um, mine was torn. If you look at your tracker valve, it's just a diaphragm here. You can see uh, cuts and tears in it. And uh, When there's cuts and tears in it, it won't balance the fuel and air properly and uh, you'll have some rough idling. That's what I had. There's a, a tear right there. You can see it. Um, you'll have a lot of rough idling. You'll have a stalling engine. It's just a pain in the butt. Let me show you how I did it. Okay, so your first step, what you want to do is remove this coil and remove the spark plug wires so they just pop off. I've already uh, done this, I've loosened it all off, but I'm just showing you guys. So take the uh, spark plug wire off, it gives you more room. Put it off to the side, take off the coil, it's an eight mil socket. I've already uh, pre-done it. Take the screws out. It's got a harness right here, you just unclip it, pops right out two screws, take the bottom one off. Okay, and the coil comes out, gives you a lot of room to get to this uh, little screw right here, which is really tough to get to. This is where the uh, tiny socket comes in. Again, I've already uh, taken this off, but I'm just showing you guys how it can be done sitting on the rail. Just get your mini socket in there and start working it. I've pre-loosened it. And once you get it loose, you can just spin it off with your hand. Just a hex screw. Take the other one off here. Now you don't need this little tiny ratchet, but I recommend getting it because it is a pain without it. Once it's loose, you can spin it off with your fingers. There's going to be a little spring inside of this cover plate and your valve. Just be careful when you're taking it off that it doesn't go flying. It's not under that much pressure. So, bang, the plate comes off. 
There's an O-ring right here that you can just look at it. If it's fine, you don't even have to touch it. And you'll see uh, the tracker valve will pop back out. And this is the spring that's holding uh, the pressure. I believe it's a 10 PSI spring on this side. If you ever had to do the air pressure regulator uh, valve, it's under an 80 PSI spring. Um, they have a little tool you can buy to remove it so and install it, but again, I think you can do it yourself. So once that's done, uh, just make sure there's no uh, debris or anything. Clean it up nice and I'm going to show you how to install it now. All right, I'm ready to install the new uh, tracker valve. Uh, they tell you to put a small amount of 2,4-C grease on the valve uh, just to help it when you seat it. And this is where uh, it'd be uh, good to get a second pair of hands that once you do seat it and put the cover plate on that it doesn't move. Because uh, you don't want to be pinching this diaphragm and damaging it again as you uh, go to put the cover plate back up. I'm going to put some uh, light grease on here, put the valve back in place, screw the uh, cover plate back on and put every component back and we're done. Putting some of the grease on. Coat it. Alright guys, I've lightly coated the uh, new seal. I'm putting it in place. Put your spring in your housing, get it ready. And uh, just place it, place it in there. All right, I'm just gonna slowly put the cover and the spring both on at the same time. All right, now start putting your screws on. This is where you'll need a second hand. Don't tighten them up until you have uh, all the screws in and then put pressure on the plate and then tighten them up. Just keeping light pressure on it. Make sure you remember to put some of that grease on the threads before you put them in. This upper corner one's hard to get to. You just gotta keep working at it. Uh, manual says to uh, tighten them to like nine Newton meters. I won't be able to get a torque wrench in there, so I'm just gonna snug them up. When I removed them, they were pretty snug. So I'm just gonna snug them back down the same. Go on opposite corners so you tighten it evenly. Doesn't take much. Just once it's seated, just put a little bit of pressure.
that's it. So now I'm gonna just put the uh, coil back on, reattach uh, the spark plug wires, and then test it out and see how uh, it turned out. Stay tuned. Okay guys, I got the uh, valve replaced. I got the water running. I'm gonna fire it up, Let's see if uh, everything works out.